when you're drawing and you get into a pattern and it becomes repetitive, you go into a flow state, like concentrating on, on the movement and the motion. And what it does is it, it frees up your mind. I knew that I needed the time and space to just sit and think. So doing work that was repetitive, but also very like time consuming and detailed gave me that space. It's how I kind of work out my ideas, I guess. My name is Philippa Jones and I work in interactive art, new media and the intersection between games and natural history. When I first came to Newfoundland, I worked primarily in interactive projections, um, but I came over with just a suitcase and I had to leave all my art supplies behind. So I used the, what I could to start uh, making art, which was drawing because it was uh, cheap <laughs> and didn't take up much space. So um, I started drawing and just letting my drawings kind of evolve and see what would happen. Drawing then became sort of the real center focus then for the rest of my practice. The natural world has always been something I have been drawn to and focused on. As a kid, I would spend all my time wandering around in the fields by myself and collecting things from nature. I've always been interested in mortality. I think part of that comes from a connection with nature. Um, you see death then in the animal world and in the cycles of life around you. The hairs are somewhere between life and death. The crystals are exploding out of them in a way to convey uh, what's gonna be happening next. So you can see all space and time compressed into, into one moment. Recently, I've lost a loved one and I felt like when that person died, it wasn't their immortality that I found. I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe their death. While on the one hand, I totally knew it, there was no denying it. On the other, it felt impossible that their life force and energy and this person who'd been so alive and vibrant one minute could be gone the next. When looking at mortality and maybe the space between life and death, the bird feels like the perfect animal to kind of encapsulate that, I guess. I've been thinking about how in a more secular age, we don't have spaces that the churches once offered where we get to contemplate the bigger questions about life and death beyond our own immediate experience, which can seem kind of overwhelming and crushing. So the orbs almost create like a secular space of wonder where you get to contemplate these bigger ideas but you can do so slightly outside of yourself. You can see it in a connection to a bigger picture and then with more of a sense of wonder and awe about everything rather than perhaps fear. I liked how that on the one hand, the act of preservation makes something eternal. They're like the bugs you find in amber that's been preserved for hundreds of thousands of years. This whole piece, I wanted to, to convey that sense of timelessness, um, but also perhaps a sense of potential. Um, and especially in an exhibition like this, which is somewhat morbid and a little macabre, um, I was concerned that people's takeaway would be a, a depressing one, I guess. And really what I wanted people to feel when they left was uplifted and more that through their understanding of their own mortality, they would seize life, I guess, and feel more life-affirmed. <laughs>